Hello, my name is Jakub Tokarzewski. I'm a software engineering intern in Visuality and R&D department member. And today I will present you an RFC process in Visuality and tell you how it will be working in the company. So after this presentation, you will know what an RFC is. You will know why do we need an RFC-like process in Visuality, uh, know the benefits of it, and know how and when to write an RFC document. So let's start with the definition of RFC. RFC is an acronym for Request for Comments, and originally those were documents written by computer scientists and engineers aimed at other professionals working in the internet sphere. And the internet was created in that way, with RFCs being a starting point of discussion or um, internet protocol details. Uh, and basing on that, people were uh, implementing actual software. And what will we understand by RFC in visuality? Is RFC is a short document, uh, lightweight, about, about the idea, about the change. And everyone in the company will be, able, will be able to read the document and give the feedback, give the ex expert feedback. And thanks to that, everyone will know about the changes in the company. And thanks to that, the ideas will be uh, improved by everyone in the company. So. You might be wondering, why would, we, why would we possibly need a mechanism like that in our company? Well, we are working with professionals who have diverse background and we would like them to suggest new ideas. And moreover, we would like everyone to be aligned to know what's, going, what's happening in the company. And we would like everyone to be a part of change also. Because no one alone is as smart as we are, or as we are all combined. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and currently, there is no such process that would allow any of that uh, because currently new ideas, new changes are suggested on one-on-one -on -one meetings or are suggested by EMs on EM board meetings. So imagine a situation when you have an idea but you don't have a way to propose it to someone. One-on-one -on -one meetings are bad, in that, are bad solution in that situation. Uh, because a lot, of question, a lot of questions appear in those meetings, the questions that would be answered by an RFC document, and uh, anything that was discussed during the meeting can be forgotten after the meeting, so, because it's not written some, anywhere. And the idea also is not presented clearly as it would have been if it was written somewhere. And moreover, even if it was decided that you accept the, the idea that it would be implemented someday, you have to align everyone in the company because nobody knows that the meeting even occurred and that the idea was originated. So you have to find a way to align them. And that's where the RFC process comes in handy. Uh, all you have to do when you come up with the idea is to ask your supervisor for some, for some time and spend that time on researching and writing a lightweight document about your idea. Then you present it to the whole company and everybody in the company uh, can suggest improvement, improvements to your idea and the process is, is happening. So you already can clearly see the benefits of introducing the RFC. It will save time that is spent on meetings. It will allow you to present your idea to the wider, wider audience. So um, even people from other offices or people working remotely can take part in, in changes and can say whatever they want about, about the changes. Can, they have right to give his and her opinion and it's easier for shy people to take part in the process because it's easier to write something than to say it face to face to someone, to criticize the ideas. And moreover, everyone in the company will be aligned easily and what is really important, asynchronously. So um, we don't have to bother how to inform everyone the company is transparent and everybody knows what is happening and what will happen and everybody can be a part of change. And another uh, really important thing is that even if the ideas are not implemented right away, after it will be kept in one place so we will not lose them and uh, they can be browsed easily. So after we know what an RFC is and why do we need that, let's jump into the part how it should look like. So on the left side, on the right side, uh, there is a image uh, showing you how the structure, the structure of the document should look like. 
Uh, it is small, but the content is not important in there. Only the sections are important. So let's jump to the first section, which is a header. Uh, it should, it must contain information about title of the document, about the author of the document, about the start date, which is the date of publishing the RFC, of publishing it to, to everyone, the to be reviewed by date, which is a deadline of commenting, and after that date, a decision of acceptance, your idea of rejecting it should be made, and uh, it, it should contain information about state. And we will talk about state later. The next section after that is abstract. It should be uh, one short paragraph introducing everyone to the topic of the RFC, and it should answer the question, what is the RFC about? So it should be encouraging for everyone. Uh, and abstract is followed by motivation. It should be a little bit longer, and it should answer the question, why do we need that in the company? Hello, Victor. Uh, and uh, it should describe uh, why, do, why are we doing this. And it is a really important part because thanks to that, people may understand what is the need of the change and they will want to change that. Uh, another important part is proposal. It's like the main part of the RFC because it describes uh, how would you like to implement the idea and what it actually what it actually actually will be so here you describe the whole implementation plan and describe how it will look like and the next section is instructions it doesn't have to be in every RFC but in most of them it will be welcomed you can present best practices in there uh, describe describe confusing parts and another section is really important, benefits. It may be a bulleted list of benefits uh, in order to, uh, to, to describe what are actually uh, measurable benefits of implementing the change, because every change must be beneficial to the company. Yeah? And uh, when thinking about your idea, you should think about the big picture. So you should think about how the change will impact every aspect of the company. So that should be uh, thought through while writing the benefits paragraph. Uh, you should also include uh, how to measure the impact of changes part in here. Uh, and after that, a similar paragraph, possible challenges, because with every change can have also uh, negative impacts that we'll have to face. So we should also think about approaches of facing those, uh, of, of those challenges and cost calculations of implementation can also be done here. And the last part should be links. If, any, if anybody wanted to dive deeper into your idea, they should go to the section links and check this out. Okay, so remember when I told you that we will talk about state later, now is the time. Uh, every RFC document has its life cycle and it's, uh, it has four states. The first state is draft. Draft is a state when the author of the RFC is doing research and he and he's writing the RFC. And before publishing the RFC, he should do a pre-published review with someone <coughs> to check out if the RFC is okay, if the format is good, and uh, if it's good to publish. If it's okay, then after publishing, it changes the state to feedback requested. And during that state, everybody in the company can uh, give improvement ideas, can comment, and the author should respond to the comments actively so people feel engaged in the process. And uh, the RFC, the idea, can be changed during that process according to the comments, uh, to the received comments. And after to be reviewed by date, the acceptance is done or rejection. If the idea is accepted, then, after some time, it is prioritized and implemented. And the author should also, should also push for the implementation of the idea after acceptance. And we will speak about that part also in, in a minute, about rejected RFCs. Uh, but let's now describe the whole RFC process in visuality. And the think our RFC is on will be Notion, as we currently use it for different purposes and people are uh, familiar with it. 
more or less, mostly. Uh, the lifetime duration of the feedback requested state would be two weeks typically, but it can be adjusted to your needs. Uh, so it's, it's flexible. Uh, all RFCs are editable only in the draft and feedback requested state. After acceptance or, reject or rejection, they shouldn't be edited. And there will be a RFC weekly Slack channel with RFC bot, which will be posting uh, messages weekly about RFCs, how many RFCs were accepted, how many are pending for comments, etc, etc. And uh, also every RFC document can have relationships with different RFC documents. Uh, like the first relation is updating. So one RFC can update another RFC. So for example, if now there is an RFC number one, which is describing the RFC process in visuality, and if we wanted to change the process some, somehow, then we would write another RFC that would update the previous one uh, because only small parts of it are changed. If we wanted to, and so the new one would update the old RFC and the old RFC would be updated by the new RFC. Another relationship is obsoleteness and uh, it's about changing the whole idea entirely. So. Uh, like if we wanted to, um, for example, change the IPv6 protocol to something something new, then it would be, uh, then it would obsolete the old one, and the old RFC would be obsoleted by the new one. And the last is the most interesting one. It's redefined by, so it's for, it's for the rejected RFCs. If the RFC was rejected, then we can take the idea from that RFC again and put it into another RFC and publish it again uh, to be resubmitted after uh, adding changes because there was a reason for rejection of the RFC. So after changing that, we can publish it as another RFC. And then we should, uh, we should say that the old RFC was redefined by the new one. So. Mm, yeah. So let's uh, conclude how the process will look like. Is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. So the first thing is you come up with the idea, then you ask your supervisor for some time to do research because research is essential here. Good research is essential. Uh, and uh, when you get time, you do research and you write the RFC. Uh, after that, you publish it and uh, everybody in the company comments on it. You, as the author, you should respond to every comments, adjust the content of the RFC accordingly to the comments. And uh, let's say that RFC was accepted. Let's uh, go with the happy scenario. RFC was accepted. And then uh, it is the ideas are prioritized and organization goals may be set basic on the accepted RFCs or the author can push for the implementation of the RFC uh, for the idea. Uh, yeah, so that is how the process will look like. It will be described in more precise way uh, during the next lightning talk, the Tomasz's lightning talk. Uh, this presentation was only for uh, showing you the uh, big picture of the process in a more deta detailed way and showing the uh, showing the materials will be on Tomasz's lightning talk. Now it's a time for short Q&A, but with basic questions because the more advanced questions may be answered on the uh, Tomasz's lightning talk. Thank you for listening and I'm here to answer the questions.